Welcome back on the Good Morning Artesia Radio Show. And we're moving into the 8 o'clock hour on this very busy Thursday? I think it's Thursday. Do not ask me what day of the week. <laughs> what I know is that it's 18 days until the primary. That's right. And That's right. Republicans, because of MLG's failed policies, last in education, highest unemployment, an open border mm -hmm. that's uh, welcoming, welcoming the criminal cartels, smuggling drugs, human trafficking, abuse to women and children, Republicans in New Mexico are picking the next governor on June 7th, and I'm here asking for votes. Well, let's hope so. Rebecca yeah. Dow, no relation, is with us <laughs> here in studio, and you're going to be hanging around in Artesia today. Yeah. You've got a meeting at the chamber. That's at 530 at 530? the chamber. Okay. Yeah, we're actually bouncing around. We just came from Roswell. We're headed down to, to Carlsbad, and we'll be back at 530. 530 I'd love at the for chamber. folks to come. Yes, come by the chamber. I'd love to meet you, hear your ideas. Let's talk solutions. I, You know, the governor is the most powerful person in the state, mm -hmm. and we've seen what a governor does when they don't trust people. I believe oh, yeah. the, pow the job of the governor is to give the power back to the people. First, well, do no harm. Right. Right? Well, let and me, let me ask you this. Protect the Constitution. Sure, the Constitution. Yeah, Well, that, that document. Unfortunately, yeah. in the Constitution, we have a public education department that... that New Mexico Constitution. New, New Mexico Constitution. Yes, yes. now we're talking. Um, as governor, until that is changed, if that can be changed... What can you do as governor to turn control of our education back over oh, to the schools? A because lot. you've got the CRT mm -hmm. that's been inserted into the social studies standards. Yep. And you've even got people in Artesia. And I'm sure <laughs> I'm going to put on my little uh, Artesia hat here. I'm sure even over in we love the Bulldogs. you've probably heard about the we Bulldogs. We love the Bulldogs. Um, even in Artesia, we've got two uh, private schools oh, okay. popping up uh -huh. because people, frankly, are just right frustrated right with the people that they know their friends their neighbors that they elect to be on the school board not being able to be in control of the education system in our own school district well this 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 governor's gone this is rule of law gone amok at the same time that they pass those social study standards that if unless i'm governor are going to go into effect in september of 23 um, they also passed a new rule that superintendents can, I mean, that elected school board members cannot be represented by the, the council of the school board, I mean, of the, of, the, of the district. So now, if they want to object and the PED tries to remove them from office, they have to get their own lawyer and pay for it themselves. They're not being represented as an elected official mm -hmm. through the superintendent, you know, the school district insurance. First time in the history of our state. This is government gone amok. This governor has disregarded rule of law, and I will put back local decision-making authority. I mean, this the, the, the constitutional amendment happened under Richardson. Right. This is the first time we've seen uh, this backdooring of CRT, taking away the authority of the local school boards, PED shoving their training. And by the way, it's all elective. You don't have to take their curriculum standards. You don't have to take their trainings. You can write your own policy training. And to me, when you talk about anti-racism or anti-discrimination, it's as simple as the, the, si the form that we all sign for school lunches that say liberty and justice for all. No one will be discriminated against based on their race, religion, sexual orientation, their ability, their age, their background. That, to me, is anti-discrimination. Not what we have now, rewriting of history. I'm all for accurate history. We've got to stop this. So I will return authority back to the local. Parents are in charge of their children, not politicians. Right. And so parents should be partnering with their local elected school boards and their qualified educators. These are the leaders in your school district and your, your administrators, and they should be creating the priorities for in school improvement. And it looks different. Like here, you know, and I see this a lot in southeast New Mexico, the focus is on career pathways, which I think is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Another community may take a different approach. And that's why I sponsored Senate Bill 96. I was the House sponsor of that bill that created the opportunity for transparency and accountability on how dollars are spent. Because prior to this bill, which this PED has not put in place, it was statutorily required to be in place by December. And it's still not. They're just re just ignoring rule of law. Um, but it. But I did it for two reasons. One, that we're always told it's more money. Just need more money. But our educational outcomes aren't changing. And I think New Mexicans are willing to invest what it takes to get outcomes. But they want to see that they're measurable. The other part of that bill is that a local community could say, look, we think kids are failing in math because they didn't have free breakfast. If they had breakfast, they could pay attention in math. They're hungry. Fine. How much did you spend on breakfast? who got the breakfast and show us the increase in their math scores.
So this is a software that allows us to follow the dollars to the school site. We lose track of it at the district site now. And to me, that gives more local autonomy. But what I've been fighting against in Santa Fe is all of the CRT. It's racism. It's un-American. I oppose it. Mm -hmm. Our children have been locked down. Uh, they uh, highest suicide, highest homicide. Uh, I mean, um, yeah, suicide, homicide, self-harm. They're more medicated, socially isolated, too much time on technology. They're self-reporting that they're uncertain and confused about their future. So the last thing they need to be told is that based on a race and a sex they didn't choose, that they're oppressed or oppressors. That is the wrong direction. Broke right. my heart to see Soldier's Monument torn down in Santa Fe Plaza. Oh, it's it, some of the things we've seen. And you're right, Rick, the, the amendment was put in when Richardson was governor, and mm -hmm. I think a lot of it had to do with financial issues. It was supposed happening. to be, yes. And But now... The only but, intervention that PED was given the authority for was negligence around finances. Right. That was it. This that is, was it. This is regard for the statute. This is an overreach of government, and we've got to pull back the reins. Yeah, because it turned into COVID and mass policies, and now we're seeing the... I, I think I saw somebody on the education committee or somebody associated with this as they were hearing objections to this said well if you don't like it take your kids out and put them you know take homeschool them. yeah but by the way your your taxpayer dollars you're, you're a taxpayer and those dollars are not going to follow your student and, and you know so when i'm governor i learned one thing from mlg we all had to go on facebook to see what freedom she was going to allow us to have because if you don't believe in inalienable god-given rights and in, in your leadership, then you're resorting to giving people what the, what the government chooses to delegate to you. No, yeah. That's that's not the way it's supposed to be. But she used Facebook as a tool. I will use Facebook as a tool to talk about the fact. Let's start calling out the state representatives who are voting against school choice or dollars following students, even if it's to another charter school or public school, but put their kids in private. Well, that's that's that would be an interesting. Uh, There's a lot of them, by the way, to put out there to There's do a lot that. of them. Um, and and you're right about the. You know, sitting around and waiting during the pandemic to find out if if our business was going to be considered essential yeah. or not. So we we all most of us remember, especially in this part of Don't the state, forget. remember all that. But how do you how do you make sure people remember that? Is there enough? Are there enough people that have not <laughs> that remember all of these things? Remember, you know, the only reason we had to uh, that she relented on letting people go in and shop was because the picture of the people waiting in line in the winter. Uh, showed up in the New York Times. Um, you, you know what I'm talking about right. when it came to the restrictions yeah, on people going into to be able to buy groceries. So how do you how do you remind people? Do people remember that? Is that people remember? Do do they remember? People remember. They have not forgotten how she feels. I've been in all 33 counties. Mm -hmm. uh, we've gone across the state since July, and I am a candidate saying, "Choose me." Um, I want to be a leader in this fight for our state and for our republic. It's going to take the biggest groundswell, grassroots efforts. Everyone has to get engaged. Everyone's got to walk their neighborhood, call their friends and family, make sure people are registered to vote. They have to tell their stories. We, we all have loved ones who died alone in hospitals, and we're not forgetting that. Right. We're not going to forget that. that. That's another thing. We're that's not going right. to forget that this open border is flooding our state with obligations to people who didn't come here legally at the risk of us keeping our promises to our retirees, to our senior citizens, to our veterans. We're not forgetting that. We're not going to forget that she told us we could not celebrate in our houses of worship while she's saying, come to New Mexico. You know, when you come get your late-term abortion, tour, you know, visit one of our state parks. This is this is insanity, and it must stop. As goes our nation, goes the world. Our our nation is worth fighting for. We have the greatest republic in the world that serve us well for 245 years. Been the beacon of democracy and freedom, exporting uh, you know aid around the world. We are generous, and and our republic, is, we're fighting for our republic. The no, very, no question about the it. The very American dream. Yeah, no quit. No question about it. Uh, last last question. Yep. Um, as you travel around the state, is there one issue that pops up that seems to be consistent across the entire state of yeah. New Mexico? And what, what is that issue and what's your, what's your pr plan for that? The biggest issue that comes up is securing the border and crime. Okay. And I think those are connected. Those are interconnected because uh, we have got to, in my plan, I, I'm endorsed by four border sheriffs. There are five border sheriffs. The fifth one is very progressive and, and would never endorse a Republican. So I'm endorsed by Las four. Cruces, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> Anyways, and, and anybody listening that might have friends or family in Las Cruces, let, let's not keep her. Um, so help, let's help get her out of office. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so I want to finish. You know, Trump was the first president.
president who's, who embraced the Border Patrol plan. And they have a plan. It includes a wall as a deterrent. Equally important is the technology and the cyber, the cyber um, fiber optic communications that they need to be able to see incidents in real time. They need roads that are well maintained and have access to, creep, to, to critical access points so that they can respond. And they want the National Guard redeployed. These are highly trained law enforcement officers who say that 60 to 80 percent of their time is now spent on paperwork and care and comfort of people who are coming here illegally. That has allowed the criminal cartel to come across freely. Fentanyl. Mm -hmm. More deaths to fentanyl than COVID. You know, but you ask the governor what's going on with the board, you know, what, what are we going to do to keep fentanyl out of New Mexico? And she's, oh, fentanyl calls from, comes from China. Not the border. No, she hadn't talked to anybody in <coughs> law enforcement. And crime. Yes, yeah. I do talk to law enforcement. And they're yeah. endo I'm endorsed by six sheriffs because they know I'm going to follow through on my commitments. And as far as crime goes, we back the blue. And that's my record. And I, I take offense to my opponent sending out a mailer suggesting that I would want criminals released from crime when I have been sponsoring the bills that say otherwise. Why I've been backed by blue, why I was uh, chosen as the DAs, of multiple DAs have endorsed me for this race, and why they chose me as their House Representative of the Year, and stood up in a room full of victims advocates and and law enforcement officers and prosecutors saying Rebecca Dow has been on speed dial with us she listens to us and she votes with us don't believe the rhetoric and the lies and I would just ask the undecided people out there to do the same you know people know when they're listening to someone who has talking points or reading from a teleprompter versus an everyday New Mexican a mom a business owner a community conservative leader who is ready to take this state on a course correction that's absolutely nurse necessary and I'm ready to get the job done I'm asking for you to listen to your trusted conservative leaders who are endorsing me. Ask them if the lies, the million dollars worth of lies, to slander my good name and my good work, if they're true. And ask them who they're voting for. Because I think they're going to tell you Rebecca Dow. If you want to meet Rebecca Dow. 5.30 tonight at the Chamber of Commerce. You're going to be here in yes, Artesia today. Yes, come out. That. Say That's hi. Great. I saw one of your signs. I was in uh, Rio Rancho over the weekend for softball. And I saw one of your signs, and I said to the guy I was with, I, I got to have one of those signs because it looks like I'm <gasps> running for governor. But, uh, we'll make sure we get one for yeah, you. Yeah, he was going to hop out of the car and take the one. Uh, oh, he better not. He that, that actually required a sticker with a permit on it. So don't take, <laughs> do not steal a sign in Rio Rancho. It's hard to get them up. <laughs> That's crazy. So, And I didn't want to cause an accident. You know, you never know how people are going to react in well, some Well, one of, of our 4x4 four four signs was actually um, there was an accident, and the sign was taken out, which... Um, sorry for the accident, you know, yeah. hope, you know, happy to hear that everyone. Everyone's okay. But yeah, I took out one of the signs. So now you got to get another permit so you can put another sign back up. So <laughs> it's it's kind of crazy. Anyway, thanks for coming in. Appreciate Thank you, you being here. for and, having me. And we'll uh, hopefully have a good crowd come by and visit with you this afternoon. I sure hope so. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you. We're going to take a break.